to be a Sula Yeshua for all those who need it. And, Amen. Um, both personally, nationally, and the community, everything. Amen. Uh, we're going to do Jerush Aleph. It's a little bit on the, it doesn't necessarily follow the, you know, short. This is Pasha Tetzave, yeah? Pasha Tetzave, excuse me. Purim Kotzer, everyone. Purim Samech. Right. Thank you so much. Um, actually, no, we'll start with, yeah, we'll do, we'll do Jerush Aleph and we'll get through it. We can get through Aleph, then we'll try to do another, another one of these. So another one that's a little shorter. What page in this, in this safer? Uh, that's a good question. Let me see. Bruce uh, Aleph is in here. Tough, tough, I am Okay, thank you so much. No problem. So a little on the longer side, but it's, uh, we can, it's, uh, it's actually very cool. It's, it's, um, it kind of, it's, uh, it's something unique. That we never thought of before, but that's generally that's like the MO of the Zara Shimshon in general, is that he comes up with some new Kiddushim that we never expected, um, about about things that we kind of look at many times and probably many times. Bruce Aleph of the Zara Shimshon. Tzava. Her Pachat Tzava. The last week of Shabbat Shalom being taught. Okay. The Zara Shimshon was the beginning of a good, the beginning of the new challenge in our focus. We took the first part of the night. Begin to start seeing that we're now focused uh, of, right. of the last couple of months, which have not been so. I've been the opposite of now. Focus. So let's just, let's see if we can turn it around. So it says here like this: the first thing we're going to do is we have to, first, in order to understand the zero we have to look at what happened at the end of last week's parasha, and the end of, end, end of last week's parasha. Uh, oh, like this. So last week's parasha ends with Truma. Parsha Truma ends with the. Um, the last word of Parsha Truma is. Last word of Parsha Truma? You think I know the Chumash by heart? So I don't, I, I don't think you know by heart. Does it say Gol Mavilna on my forehead? It says, It says, The last word of last week's Parsha is Nechoshet. So the, the last week, uh, the last week's Parsha ends with Nechoshet, which is obviously talking about the. Um, the Mizbeach and Choshet. And we, in order for us to, the Zer Hashim Shon is, is trying to understand what he says here. We have to understand the deductive tradition, meaning the connection between last week's Parsha and this week's Parsha. So he says here, if we, if we looked, only if we looked at the last word, the Choshet, we can really start understanding what the connection of this week's Parsha is and even next week's Parsha, actually. So look what he says here. So he says by suggesting that the word the is actually Rashi Tevot of Ner, which is uh, the um, we'll get to it in a second, but it's Ner, but just the Menorah. Chodesh is the Kedusha uh, Chodesh. Shkalim is the Bachatzita Shekel, which is next week's parsha, and Tireh is you will see. And then the next week, the next words right after the the, the, the word the is Vatatetzavim. So now he says, "Vehem shlosha dvarim shnit kashem Moshe behem lufi mashe katar Rashi beperushus achumash." We look at Rashi in Bamidbar uh, and in Shmot in bo- both Kiddush Hakodesh and the next week's parsha in um, Kitisa Machatzita Shachol next week, and in this week and in Bamidbar with every one of them, the Nair, which is a Menorah, the Chodesh, which is Kiddush Hakodesh, and Shkalim, which is the Machatzita Shekel. Those are the three things. So he said, the question is why? So he says, he says, if we look in the Re'em, the Rebel Yaw Mizrahi, and the Maharsha, we'll see that he mentions that these three things. We have, we know that these three things. So the Kiddush HaChodesh, when we look at we look at the Rashi on Kiddush HaChodesh, he says, "I don't understand." The moon gets bigger, gets smaller, whatever it is, and he says, Kaze, and Rashi tells him, "Kaze, Kaze Rayu Kadesh." He says, "Look here, look at the moon, and explain, and I'll explain to you what you mean." Same thing with next week. What happens with the parsha with the Machatita Shekel? He says, "He says, what do you mean Machatita Shekel?" And says Rashi there says also he shows him a shekel of a fire. What happens with the part with the menorah? Same thing. Moshe has a has a has a problem with the menorah. 
Thank you so much. Uh, so he has a problem with the menorah. Thank you. He has a problem with the menorah. Uh, so it's same thing. Hashem says, what do we do? Put the, put the gold into the fire. And what happens? Miraculously, what happens? With what? With the menorah? Yeah. Hashem tells him, throw the gold into the fire. The menorah came out? The menorah comes out. Really? Three things that have to do with Hashem saying Moshe has problems. So the question is, I don't get it. He said, Zerah Hashem Shon says, it's all nice and good. It says that this week's partial, we know that this week's partial is Hashem. You know. Whoa, what's that? It's Muzalot or Amotzi? I would assume Amotzi. No, so it looks like that. Wow. So he says here. Wow, thank uh, you. Uh, so it says here that Moshe had a difficult had difficulty with these three things, but we, we should not we shouldn't be we shouldn't be we should be asking a simpler question. They're much more they're much more difficult things that Moshe didn't have quite problems with, but only these three things he did have problems with. The menorah, machzida shekel, and what? Kiddush Hakodesh. Uh, and yeah, if, actually, if we go to Kiddush Hakodesh, let's just go just for an example, so you all understand what I'm saying. We go to Parshat Bo Perak Yudbet uh, Pasuk. Uh, pasuk, sorry. Yes, pasuk, it says here. Uh, yeah, sorry. Pasuk bet. It says from there we learn about kiddush hakodesh, and it says Rashi says there. Hashem said, Hashem showed Moshe the, the, the moon as it was getting new. And he says, Marlo, When the moon is getting new, have a new Rosh Chodesh. Right? And then he says, what does he say later? And he says, Hazed. And then the, 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 the word Hazed, Rashi says, Moshe Moshe says, Moshe had a problem with understanding the Molad. The whole idea of Molad. Okay? And what does it say there? And he says, Heralo ba'etzva, Hashem showed him with his finger, kibiachol, et halevana berakia v'amarlo, kazeh ba'eva kadesh. He says, here, this is what you have to do. When you see it small like this. When you see it small, this is what you have to do. Okay, so that's, oh. that's the first one. That's in parsha Bo. Then if we go to next week's parsha, which is a machatzita shekel. Uh, machatzita shekel. It says here. Sorry, we're flipping pages here. Just to explain the point. And he says here, Rashi says, uh, says here, right, where am I? Ah, here. So it says here, Zeitnu, that's in the third, it's Pasuki Jimel of Parsha Kitisa, it says, Heralo Kimin Matbea Kalesh. It says he showed him a matbeah of fire, right? Umishkala machatita shekel, it's half a shekel. And if you look at the menorah, which is, uh, and later in the menorah, we also know that he, uh, in, okay, so the menorah also, he had a problem with those, with that as well. Okay, so now, he says, why is it that those three things, those three things don't seem to be that difficult, that Moshe should have such a challenge with it? Yeah, just take it out of the it's all good. It's all good. Uh, so, uh, uh, so he says the question is well, the question is why did Moshe have such a hard time with this? So, um, the Zera Shimshon already starts saying is that these three things hinted to the Moshe would not come into Israel. Yes, that's what Zera Shimshon says. That's his opening statement. His bold statement of the thing is that these three things. Or why did he have such difficulty with them? Is because he, they represent his, his 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 challenge of going into Eretz Israel. Okay, and now he gave him now the now the Zerah Shimshon explains. He says why first we have to explain why these three things and why we need to remind why does Hashem have to remind them three times? Okay, so he says here. The fish shegam hu bishloshad varim yanami menu kisat aaretz. He says that this was indicated to him three times. That is Moshe was told three times, because there were three things that prevented Moshe from er going into Eretz Yisrael. And if you look in the Zohar on Parsha um the, the first time, what is the first thing that he, what, what was the first time that Moshe was prevented from er going into Eretz Yisrael? When he challenged Hashem and he said, what? Shlach na biyati shlach. He was a little bit mechutzaf to Hashem. 
Oh, when Hashem told him to go, he said, you sent somebody right. else? Exactly. Ah, that's the first time? That's the first time. Ah, I thought it was only they hit the, the rock. No, no, And then he says the second time, Hashem, Lama Reota. The second time is when B'nai Yisrael are suffering. When B'nai Yisrael are suffering, what does he say? Why are you making it worse for them? Right? Lama Reota, that's the second time. And the third time? Ah, so it's not even the one of the... Which is interesting. So he says here, basically, that there were three times... Hashem tells Moshe there are three times, I'm going to give you three signs that you're not going to be Israel. And those three signs are not the ones that you and I would have thought for at least one of... Two of them are not the ones that we would have thought. The first one we would have thought, as you said, is hitting the rock. That's the famous that's one. That's what we all think, right? So everybody... But the Zohar says not. The Zohar not, does not say that. The Zohar says, Yishlach mm-hmm. Nabiat Yishlach, Lama Riyota. And the third one is when, B'nai, so when Hashem, I'm oh, sorry, when Moshe accepted or took, brought in the Erev Rav, he, according to this, the Erev Rav is the one who brought in uh, next week's parsha the Chet Egel. Okay? And therefore, what happens with the Chet Egel? What happens? The Yetzirah Hara comes back after at Matan Torah, they, it was removed. But it was, if you want to come to Yisrael, you have to be with the Erev Rav. Right. <laughs> you have to, uh, you have to not say why, did, why are we, why are we, why are we getting the Arabs hitting us? Don't say that too much. And three, uh, you know, you know, three is do your shlichus. Exactly, exactly. But here, look what he says here. It says, "Aval So he says here, ah, look exactly what you're saying. What was the next? What was you were saying? which is hitting the rock, right? That's the famous one. Right. Look what he says. Aval who inyan acher legamre, right? He says inyan acher. Shemichmat zenish barakas baruchu shneimar lachen no tavi. This was the the the, the stamp. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. He says ve'el lachen el shvua v'shuv lo ayalo takanat l'arbot v'tula l'batel gizera. So he says is we all ask the same question. Meimi riva. That's the one we all think of. So we're all right that meimi riva is indeed what caused Moshe not to go into Eretz Yisrael. But it's unlike the other three, where we could have said is maybe those three Moshe could have undone, quote unquote. This but was this, it. this is that's, that's why he says lachem. But in the words there, it says lachem. Hashem says to Moshe lachem. In other words, the other stuff no, you no, could, no, could have still done. Still... Right, you could have asked for forgiveness and down. But that's but here, it. Once you say lachem, it's a lashon shvua. Once you say lachem, then Hashem says that's it. No more, no chance. Okay. So therefore, emergence are basically what happens is that as a punishment for these three things, these three sins, the three sins again are Shlach Nabiati Shlach, where he basically challenges, he kind of challenges Hashem, saying is, you know, Hashem says, you're going to go to save B'nai Israel. And then Moshe says, I'm not the one who's doing it. Hashem says, go do it. Moshe goes back and says, I'm, I don't want to do it. That's the first one. Why have you done evil? Why have you done, make it worse for us than you could have done it? Than it, was, than it was already. And the third one was only accepted the Erevah. But what, 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 what's the connection between uh, the Lama Erota to the menorah? Ah, we haven't gotten there yet. Ah, you didn't get there. We're going to get there. Mitchel, so now he explains the three mitzvot that, could, that Moshe could not comprehend. Like you said, the, the three mitzvot that we couldn't understand, which are Ner, Chodesh, Sheker. Those are the three ones that he couldn't understand. And those are the three that, what, how those connected to what we just mentioned, right? So now, in a, me, like Al Panav, as they say, like, you know, from the, like, just from looking at it from a, like, at a, at a glance, what you could say is that the three, rep, those three times, the three times that he sinned, Moshe sinned three times, so Moshe, Hashem wanted to go and show him three different mitzvot that in some way correspond to them. There's got to be connection, like you said. So we're going to figure it out. So he says like this. Your question, Zerah gives you the answer. He says, "Umitchila Moshe nitkashe b'molad hash alavana." First, we have the question that what did Moshe? What did he have? The first question. What was the first challenge you understood? You know how to do first mitzvah? Kiddush Lavana. Kiddush Lavana. Kiddush Achodesh. Right? Shehi remez l'malchutan shal Yisrael. Right? It's an illusion. Right? It's a remez to the, the, the success of Bnei Yisrael. Right? V'hu neged shlach na b'liyati shlach, and it corresponds to Moshe saying. Send whoever you want, right? In other words, whoever you tell me to send, I'll you just send whoever you want. That's basically kind of saying, right? So he says, is that statement, Moshe declined to be the one who's going to bring him in. Because he said, so just send whoever you want. That's why he didn't understand the Kiddush Lavana. Because Kiddush Lavana is the Malchut. And you, you, you don't want to be the, you don't want to go and do the Malchut. So you weren't willing to accept it, so you're not willing to be, you're not willing to be the Shaliach. So he says, that's the, that's the first one. Step one. 
Next one, Odin Kasha Benora, La Menora. He had a problem with the Menora. I forgot, it was in last week's Parsha. I believe it's last week's Parsha. He says what? In the Menora, he says, you know, it's this big Miksha Achat. He just says, I don't get it. I can't do that. It's impossible. How do you do that? So he says, Hashem tells him, I think Rashi says it there. Rashi says, throw, he told, Hashem told him to throw the piece of gold into the fire, and out comes the menorah. Okay, so what do we have here? So he says, Why is that? He says here, um, he only explains about the, the Yarech here. Oh, no, he's not done. Yeah. Like he's first he's giving you the, the he's giving you the Goteret, and then he's going to go into breaking news. He's giving you the headlines, and then he's going to go. He also had difficulty regarding the menorah, and that corresponds to Lama Hariota and Bashkalim. And with regards to the half a shekel, it says Neged. It's corresponding to the Erev Rav. Okay. Now he says Vizay Biuram. Now this is the explanation. Okay. First, we have to explain what it means Kiddush Hakodesh. We, we know what happens to the moon. It gets, it starts small, gets big, and then it gets small, and it small again, and it gets small again, right? What they call in English, boxes and wings, right? It starts, it gets small, big, whatever, right? And he says this is a dugma, this is a symbolic of Eretz Yisrael. Shemishula la tzvi is compared to a tzvi. What happened? What does the gemara? Skin of a deer. Well, exactly. What does the gemara say? Exactly. Very good. It's like a deer. You could stretch it. Right. The skin automatically. Exactly. She ain't no zikit bisaro. Right. The skin is not large enough to accommodate all the flesh that's in the in the the tzvi. Bisman shvi shvei aleha. So too, when the people of Eretz Yisrael are sitting there, revachad expands. Ain yoshvi aleha. Gamda contracts. Right. We can understand that today too. I'm not going to get into <laughs> politics, right? When the people are B'nai Israel are sitting there, what happens? Everyone, we have plenty of room. We can't, we can't, we can't build it fast enough, right? So you get the Arabs out, we'll have more room. <laughs> and I'm not like I said, I'm not getting into it. Okay. So he says here, Ukenege Ted Vav Yamim Hashem Shalvana, Hayu Ted Vav Dorot Nara Mashlomo, Shaz Kanya Si Arabi Sumuta, Kidaita Bazar. He says, corresponding to the first 15 days of the Lulavan of the moon. Those, are the fifth, those correspond to the 15 generations from Abraham to Shlomo. And what happens from Abraham to Shlomo? What happens to the Bnei Israel? It only gets over between Abraham and Shlomo. What happened? Bnei Israel expand. They expand. They come to Eretz Israel. The Malchut happens, etc., etc. As it says in the Zohar. What happens with the 15th day of the month? It starts waning. It's smaller. It starts getting small. Okay? So if we look at the Yalkut Ivrei Hayamim, which is a is the basically Yalkut Shimoni, he says that if you look, it says Hashem, it says there if you merit, then you'll be able to count the fifteen full days from the Aleph to Tetvav, Avram Yitzchak, the fifteen generations from Avram to Shlomo. If you don't merit, what's going to happen? You're going to count the fifteen not so good days. You're going to count basically. But the Kiddush Tovana we can only do on the first fifteen days. Right, but he's getting it. Okay. In the above, we can understand that more, why Moshe found difficulty there. Why? If Moshe, if Moshe made Chisam Eretz Yisrael la'aretz, lo'olam hayu yoshvim aleya tamid shayu ayanot am sham. Kanoda, right? Tamid ay tam memshel b'Yisrael, v'lo ayan echrab abayit, right? Tal v'amimua. L'chein shamar lo akadosh baruch hu chavodesh alachem. Dimashma l'shon chidush v'ra chidush al. L'avonam mitchadeshet mitkasha Moshe. Moshe realized that the renewal, the, the moon, the Chidush HaKadosh HaKadosh is symbolic of what? The renewal of Jewish monarchy. But he couldn't understand why it was possible for the Jewish people to experience renewal once he knew, what, once he would bring them to Israel. He said, what's the problem? I don't get it. If the moon gets bigger and smaller, why do I have, why, I don't understand the small part. I can't get it. I don't grasp the small part. I'm only thinking about... Oh, so that's why I can't bring them. If I can't bring them. Right? In other words, he's saying is, I don't get it. Because Moshe Rabbeinu, if he came, there wouldn't, the wouldn't be the small part. Exactly, there wouldn't be the small part. So wow. Moshe, Moshe Rabbeinu needs kasha. Nice. Need kasha with Kiddush Levana. With Kiddush Levana. Because he says, I don't get the small part. I can't get it. I, I, I don't move in. Right? It doesn't get I don't hop it. Right? Right? The sad part. Exactly. Exactly. Now, let me tell you. 
So he says, this is why Hashem showed him, explained to him, what? To explain to him that, unfortunately, Moshe, why are you having such a difficulty with a relatively easy Mitzvah, which is Kiddush HaKodesh? Because unfortunately, you're not going to be bringing them to Eretz Yisrael, because I want to show you what's going to actually happen. The, the, the Galut, right? And that's why you're having challenges. You're having challenges because you can't see beyond the, the positive side, the, Esser, the 15 first days, right? You can't see beyond that, right? But what happens after the 15 not-so-good days? The next 15 good days, right? So Hashem is trying to tell him that it's a circle, Right? But Moshe could only see the 15 good days. He couldn't see the, the next part. Or he, couldn't, he wasn't willing to comprehend it. That's dark. Okay. We just did. Well, Shabbat. I think we all don't understand well, why, we understand. why we have to have the bad side. Exactly. The Galut. Right? But we also Galut understand. Ishmael. Right? Right? We don't understand why we have to go through this. We don't understand. We're all Pchinat right? Moshe Rabbeinu. What, 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 what else? What else, though? What what? Else? We also, even within the bad, what happens? Sometimes you see little light, lights of good. Right? Even though it's in the bad stuff, sometimes you see those little lights are good, but sometimes it's hard for us. It's even harder, right? We, we have that difficulty because we're so focused on that, in that moment, that it's like bad, quote-unquote, whatever that means, that we can't really take a second and say, wait a minute, maybe there's a really good thing coming, right? So that's what that's step one. That's the moon. What's the issue of the moon that he has? So the question is like this. There are three things. If you look at the last... Yeah, yeah, story, like I, have, I literally happened to have just learned this tomorrow. Okay. So. so there are three things that Moshe <laughs> had challenges with, yeah. right? And if it's and Zerushim Shon says it's it's Ramuz in the last week the last word of last week's parsha Nechoshe, right? Okay, so he says Ner, Chodesh, Shekel, Tireh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Shem and, Shon, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. you'll see those three things. Yeah, yeah. Right, those three things are the ones that he had challenges. Right, right. So the first one is Eric, if we just said Kiddush Chodesh. Okay, now we're going to go to Ner Menorah. What, what was his issue with Kiddush Chodesh? I just why why that? I mean, well, he said so Kiddush Chodesh. The reason why Kiddush Chodesh is such a challenge is because Kiddush Chodesh represents. Basically, according to Moshe, at least he looks at, oh, he's basically, Moshe couldn't comprehend the fact that the, the moon waxes and wanes. Mm-hmm. He doesn't understand that. He couldn't grasp that. It means that there's good stuff, but he couldn't understand that there's also less good stuff at the end, on the other side. So Moshe was only looking at it, and that was representative also of the same thing with Eretz Yisrael. He says that's this representative of Eretz Yisrael. But the Zerah Shimshon is trying to do is basically saying that these three things that Moshe had challenges with are s- symbolic of why Moshe had it. Uh, these three things are also hints to why Moshe couldn't go to Eretz Yisrael. Mm-hmm. Not the hitting the rock, which is the famous reason. Hitting the rock was like the, as they say, makeba, final. That was the makeba patish, right? Yeah, it's the last thing, literally, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, literally here. Okay. Now he says, Bitzivuya menorah. Okay, regarding the, the mitzvah of the menorah. So, someone added in the tough obstacles reinforce our importance of why we need to fight the war for what is right. Okay. Sure. Okay. Let's go. Okay. What? What, 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 what? Uh, the, 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 the top three Thank things. You know. What does he say? The tough obstacles reinforce our importance of why we need to fight for what is right. We have to fight for what is right because of these obstacles are... Uh, uh, why do we have to fight for what is right? Uh, maybe ask him to clarify. Please clarify. <laughs> okay, so he says, now we have the qu- next one is, we just did the Chet of Nechoshe. Now we're going to do the Nun, the, the Ner. Regarding the, the mitzvah of menorah, it says te asek tiv te asek biyud, right? With the yud, the lo kit the chetev don't write that. It's not what it says in. It's nowhere else. In the whole Torah, we don't have a yud after te asek. Exactly. Right, exactly. We have, we have te asek, but we never have a yud after a taf. Like te asek, te asek. Yeah. Right, we never have that. Vamruba midrash. If you look at the words in the mor- and when you talk about the menorah in last week's parsha, uh, it says te asek. Right, it says uh, here twenty five so cafe. It says here, Kafei 31. So it says here, 31. It says here, Te Ase. Te Ase is spelled Taf, Yud, Ayin, Samech, Ayin. The only place in the Torah where you have a Yud here. Right. There's no never, there's never yeah, a Yud after the Taf. The, the word Te Ase. Doesn't appear it means to do. To, to do. said to do. Right. Normally, you don't have a yud after the tav. It's the so only it place in the whole Torah where it has a yud after the tav. So when it's right. talking about the golden menorah. Right. So then it says te'aseh. It says here. So he basically says te'aseh. What? Does it make it lashon asid? It makes it te'aseh. It should be made. It's almost like it should be made. Okay. And the, the chachamim there say shehu remez la'eser menorot te'aseh lashon like like yud. The yud there is representative of the, the oh, set. Ten. The ten. 
right? The 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 shon the shlomo that Moshe the shlomo made what? How many how many menorahs? Ten. Shlomo made? Ten. So this year is the remnants to do ten. ten. What about the eleventh one, the Mashiach? Wow, Bainu? Wow. <laughs> you know what to say now. Oh, we're getting there. <laughs> yeah. Why did Moshe, why did, why did, uh, this is a great one. You're going to love this part. Why did Moshe, why did Shlomo make ten menorahs? So it's the Shach. Uh, and per, uh, it says, the Sifri Kohen says, he says here, what? He says, what happened? Moshe, Shlomo makes ten. And Mishkan, like you said, Moshe makes only one, right? So he says, "Are you calling what Kufi Tachtav? So Shlomo Malach al Yomim v'al Tachtonim." Okay, so he says, "What Mishum Hachi Asar Asim Menorot Kula Mishiva Nirot." Every one of the menorahs had how many? Uh, seven. Seven. Seven times ten. Seventy nations. Seventy nations. How many, nice. How many? How many, how many uh, uh, Amim did Shlomo Malach rule? Olechu Olechu Machsir, like Beit Shammai. Yeah. How many did he, How many did he rule over? Seventy nations. He ruled over seventy nations. Very good. Shlomo Melech. Shlomo Melech. Right. 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 What happens with what? How many nations in Moshe? One. one. They only have to do seven. Right. That's why he only made one. You hear that? It's a great. It's a great Torah. Nice Kiddush. You're right. It's your nice Kiddush, right? Mishum Hachi lo asu el mu'achat ad kenosh. That's the Shach says. The Shach says we have ten from Shlomo Melech. Can I get 70, 7 times 10, uh, sorry, yeah, 7 kanim, 7 uh, li, uh, la, uh, lamps, or 7, seven arms, uh, times 10 menorahs is 70, because Shlomo Melech has to control and rule over 70 nations. How many nations did Moshe have to rule over? Only the 7 of Eretz Yisrael. Ukshera Moshe. What happened when Moshe said, Hashem, you're only making me want to do one. The only command me to do what? I don't get it. Lo evin. He didn't understand. He said, wait a minute, I need 10. I need to do it to do what? To be all the 70 nations. Right? That's what happens when you have a multitude of we learned that last a couple of weeks ago when it says it says the Midrash there says he says is that you're gonna see you're gonna see uh you're 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 not gonna go in you're not gonna go into Eretz Israel but Yoshua is gonna conquer the the, the Lama Al Malachim. So he basically is saying is I am a Mohammed Lama Lamachim, a Techaya Machni of Koshi Bimamot, Razaya Yuhol, Rasova Mibarisha Munot, a fish of Kola Tikunaya, Baka Echad, Bishwiz Hutoshaya Ishakhar. So basically he's saying is that basically Moshe had a difficulty as from Hashem saying, Lama Hariota, why are you making it worse? Right, that's what it literally means, Lama Hariota. And Hashem says, wait, because Lama Hariota, you won't be able to see, you won't be able to go into Eretz Israel. So reason number two is get can I get the menorah? What's the menorah? You have seven kanim, seven arms. So Moshe says, I don't get it. Why do I only have to build one menorah which has seven arms? Shouldn't I be building seventy? Like ten menorahs with seven arms? Hashem says, No, no, no. You're not gonna because you said Lama Rayota, you're only gonna get to see mm-hmm. what? You only have to be the the seven Amin, the seven nations to get to get people to get Lama Rayota like what context was it there? Lama Hashem tell, Moshe telling to Hashem. You may, B'nai Israel, Hashem tells, it's the last uh, parsha of... Uh, oh, the beginning, the beginning. The first makot, the beginning. The first makot, he said, no, right before the first makot, Hashem says to Moshe, go, right, it's, when it's like, Paro, right. No, when Paro gave right. us the, to right. add the, the right. kosh, right. Right. to go get the kosh, the tevin. Oh, right, right. at the end of Shmos. It's at the end of Shmos. Yeah. Obviously, he's already talking to Paro. Right, yeah. exactly. But he hasn't yet done the makas beat up yeah. between him and the... Right, so what happens is Hashem goes to, Moshe goes to Paro, and he's, he, Hashem tells Moshe, go to Paro and tell him to get out, tell him to, tell him to leave Ben Israel, uh, get Ben Israel out. Hashem says, Moshe says, no problem, I'm going. And as soon as Moshe goes, it says... You know, uh, it says, it says, send out the nation. What does that Paro say? Oh, you want to send the nation out? No problem. I'll make it worse for them. And, I said, and, then, when and when Moshe says, it's the last Aliyah of Shemot, I believe. It's not a, a complaint. It and he says, why'd you make it worse? You just told me to go. So he right? complains to Hashem. So he complains to Hashem. Exactly. So he says, you're complaining? And here's a complaint. 
So the punishment of the three. Uh, can I, um, can I repeat what our friend said? Please. He said the tough obstacles were involved. This is what he said. If one asks why are these hard obstacles happening, you may feign splice in knowing that the struggle in itself comes with an opportunity for growing. Sorry, solace in knowing that the struggle uh, it, itself comes with an opportunity for growth. Right. Okay, so that fits? Yeah, makes sense. You say basically we have to understand that sometimes when we have the difficult time, we have to look through the difficult time and understand that sometimes the difficult time is the challenge of, the, the challenge is not the, the difficulty itself, but it's also understanding that through that difficulty comes a little bit of comfort knowing that through that emerges an opportunity or something positive out of it. We just have to be willing and strong enough, both in our amuna and our, in our knowing ourselves, that we can emerge stronger as opposed to just saying, you know, this and asking Hashem why. You, you, can all, you can also say that the negative happened, I don't know if this is going to connect at all, but we'll try, that the negative happened to you has nothing to do with you, it's for the other person to help you. Correct. So, and we can learn this, we can learn this from Moshe, that... Why didn't Hashem? Why didn't Hashem speak? To you? So, and you can learn from that that Hashem that Hashem wants us, and you can like also kind of see it in the menorah. Right. Like the reason why we're here, the reason why that we have to deal with all of these issues, is because if we did not have to deal with these issues, then we couldn't act like God. Right. We couldn't be a piece of God. We couldn't help correct things, you know, and, and like make differences. Correct. Very good. <laughs> so now he says here. Okay. So now we have. Let, let's. We just did the menorah. The blood. We did the. We can do chodesh. What's left? You did chodesh the menorah. Now you have the shekel. Shekel. Very good. Okay. So now he explains what's with, what. Why did Moshe have a difficulty with the machatit of shekel, which happens to be next week's parsha, Kitisa, right? And how does this correspond to the era of Rab, which is what we said before, well, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And now he says, and which is it right? Now he says like this. Lama Rasa, Lama Naked Right, exactly. So now he says like this. Uh, okay. So he says, Similarly, when Moshe heard that Hashem tells him only on half a shekel, like I said, it's next week's parsha, right? Which indicates what? That the world is not complete, and that Hashem's name is not complete. Just like a half shekel is incomplete. Right? Hashem, it was difficult for much to understand. Right? What happens when Moshe comes to Eretz Yisrael? We know the Midrash. What happens? The world is going to be perfect, right? But Mikdash will never be destroyed. Exactly. The Haralo Hakadosh Baruch Hu not to be Ashal Eish Mishkalama Chatzita Shekel. That's what Rashi says. From Mar Shehu Lo Echdi Semer Eretz Yisrael Shekatav Ashach She Shekel Ba'Akbash Kimatria Kavav. Wow. Okay. I'm getting into uh, Akbash. So the Shach says uh, with the Chatzita Shekel, he says that the Shekel, the word Shekel. Uh, in Akbash, the, Gemar, the word shekel in Gematria of Akbash. Like you know what Akbash is? Yeah, Aleph covers Ban Tatav, Bet covers with Shin, etc., etc. So he says here, if we look at shekel, Shin becomes a Bet, okay? Da, uh, kuf becomes a Dalit, and Lama becomes a Kaf. Uh, a kaf. So two. 26. 26, exactly. But that's Hashem's full name. Exactly, hence the half a shekel. Uh-huh. Half, okay? Kedama Rabbi Yerim Yabra Eliezer, Miyom Shachara Bet Mikdash. Okay, okay, so basically he's saying is that Machatita Shekel represents only half, and Moshe had a difficulty with it because he says, I understand, if I go into Eretz Israel, what's going to happen? The world is perfect, it's complete, and your name is complete, so why are you only doing half a Shekel? So he says half, half a Shekel according to the, uh, the Shach, the Shach in Atbash, he says that the Shekel is not as the corresponding to 26, which is the full name of Hashem, but because Moshe won't be going into Eretz Yisrael, right, so it's only half, right, it's only half complete, and therefore what? Uh, we can't use Hashem's full name, and we can't use, it's, it's not, we, uh, that's why Hashem tells him it's only half a second. Ele b'chinu yo, l'fi sha'asau asura ha'egel, v'zeh amar sh'itnu l'chatzit ha'shekel, al-tanu shalom. V'zeh neged ha'erez, how is this machatzit ha'shekel, how is this 
Moshe difficulty with the half a shekel corresponding to Israel. Eregra, Shasua Ego, Beviu Abudazar Abi Israel, Kedita Bishem, Kedita Sham, the parish of Dal Abudazar, we default to Israel Ego, Galia Dalayu, the Nikalu Abudazar. Once the Jewish people worshipped, once they started doing Abudazar, they showed that idolatry was accepted to, acceptable. In other words, a half a shekel indicates that the world and Hashem's name would remain in a state of not being complete since he would not be married to lead the Jewish people to Eretz Yisrael and to build an everlasting Beit HaMikdash. Hence, the ha- the, what happened? The half a shekel corresponds to the acceptance of the Erevah, which was basically causes the state of incompleteness. So now we have, what did we just do? Now, that's why we have, that's the ner, that's the Nechoshet. That's why, according to that, if we look at now, we have Nechoshet, which is Ner, Chodesh, Shkalim, Tiret. Right? Ne'er Chodesh Kalim, we just did, explained, you will see, which is the following by our parsha, which it says, Ratat Tzavet. Lomar, the lowest card, Shem Moshe de Parsha, Zo, Lo Rot, Anashim, Eilu, Shloshet, Varim, Yadam Moshe, She Yitziat, Nishmat, Toti, Yev, Chutz, Laret, Vien, Elam, Ein, Kol, That's what the Tire is? Right, Tire is, you're going to see. From these three things. These three things, right? The Choshet, Ne'er Chodesh, Shkalim, Tire, and then it says, "Watch why Batat is there." So the Ner was the Kineged, uh, yeah, Shiva, Shiva, the uh, menorah. It, it, it was hard for him to understand why only he needed to destroy seven, seven and, not and not all, all them. Seven, right? Exactly. Chodesh is because he doesn't understand. He said, "He said the moon only should be going bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. Hashem should get bigger and bigger." Right? And he says, "Wait a minute, I don't get it. If I don't understand why I'm looking at why is it only getting bigger and bigger and smaller and smaller." That doesn't make sense. He said, well, and that was connected to Shlach Nabi at Shlach. And then uh, Erev Rav, can him the Shekel? Because no, he says it's because what happened with the Erev Rav. If Moshe accepted the Erev Rav into Bnei Israel and accepted them into coming in, and what happened? Bnei, by uh, starting to serve the Egel Azahab, which is the next week's parsha, Hashem t- it says, Ah, you started to serve Bnei Israel. The Erev Rav is the one who brought, basically was responsible for Bnei Israel to do, to perform the, 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 the or perform the. And since they, by uh, what he says here, is he's, by, uh, it says in the Gemara, he quotes the Gemara, he says, by then, by B'nai Israel starting to serve Abu Dhabi, they showed their willingness and they showed their, their real interest that they were that they were accepted, it was acceptable to them to, look, to serve Abu Dhabi. Because if they wouldn't, had the air of not. But what's how is it Machatit Shekel? Machatit Shekel is because what happens is by them serving Cheta Ego, it says here, um, what it says here. Oh, as long as there's as long as there's avodas around the world, what happens? The world Hashem, is Hashem's not complete. It's not so complete, and therefore so it's a chetzi shekel. It's, it's, it's never pretty complete. So don't, what, why, why do we need only not? So Moshe Rabbeinu couldn't understand the chetzi shekel because he was the one that bring the erev rav, and, and, but, and so they were the one that started the avodas zara. Right, and and what happened? And what happened? We should have said, what? The world should be complete. Much as like, if I come into Eretz Yisrael, what happens? The world's complete. He says, no, no, no. Hashem says, no, no, no. You don't get it. The world is not complete because what did you do? You allowed the Erev Rav to come in. Once you allow the Erev Rav to come in, they're going to influence. They've influenced B'nai Israel to do what? The Chet Ha'egel. The Chet Ha'egel, once there's idolatry in the world, you can't, you can't serve Hashem properly. Those are the three things. Nechoshet. And that's why he says, Nechoshet is the last word of last week's parsha. V'atat Tzavet doesn't Appear, Moshe's name doesn't appear here, and then what happens next week? Right? So he says, you're going to see these three things. Ner, Chodesh, Kalim, Tafis, Tere. You'll see through those three things, those three things are the representative of what, why you will see, why you won't merit, you'll understand. Tere meaning you'll see and you'll understand that those three things are those in themselves are the corresponding to the three things that you perform, uh, that you, since that, that, that you went through, uh, that caused... Uh, that, that basically caused you not to come into Eretz Yisrael. So they rep- those three things that not only represent the sins, but they also represent the reasons as to why you couldn't go into Eretz Yisrael. You won't be going to Eretz Yisrael. I'm stopping here for a reason, because the other one, the next part gets a little bit a little more difficult, a little bit more difficult, and we'll, <coughs> we'll go um, to another gosh in a few minutes. Is it, so, is it punishment for Moshe or Matthias? I don't know if it was like, I think it was more like... Um, like he's punished because whatever he, he questioned God. Eh? Yeah, right. I or think, like it's just a mitzvah. Like you just cannot, you can't go in. Cause it seems a can. little bit like a punishment. Yeah, it's a, and the way I read it. Because those are the reasons why he didn't yeah. come in there to show. It's a punishment, right. though. Right. Uh, it seems to me like a little bit of a punishment. Yeah, and it then, reminds me. 
So that Kamar there, actually, on the same sugya. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Menachos. I, I just have it learn it, so I. Um, Rush Aleph. We just finished Rush Aleph for the first time. Talk- how he, he also goes to see Rabbi Kiva teach. Right. Um, yeah, famous. And you know, he said, oh, it's your scar. And you know, Rabbi Kiva gets punished and he's the great Rabbi Kiva. And right. I think, uh, you was it like the... You want to from the Chaim or anything? I don't know if it was the Shla or somebody. I saw an article or put it, brought it in. Came here after that, dinner today. Yeah, me too. Rabbi Kiva, and I could be Moshe also, got such a high level of like you don't come from the Adam Kodem Achayd almost yep. whatever it is that like he was judged on a completely on different plane than everybody else so like even the smallest little mistake you could have the worst punishment <laughs> because <laughs> that, so, always so, judges so like <laughs> beyond human I said I'll leave such an angel such a standard question such a standard question how can you be a more <laughs> How could it be that Moshe says to Hashem, just send whoever you want, like Shlach, now we have to Shlach, it's such a plot, such a chutzpah, they can have it. Huh? It's the main thing, right? Yeah. Aburah. Says, no, last time, remember. But again, Rebbe Kiva and Rosh Hashem. Everyone's getting good there. Last time we were talking about that, everybody's going to be a little bit. You're going to be a little bit. Okay. Shkwa. Yeah, Baruch Hashem, it's good to hear. Such very, very, very unique. I've never seen it so Oh, yeah, 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 that's true. That's true too. That's the same for everyone. You, but you feel like you never left. That's, that's true. true. Okay. Always. You need some more food and then I'll leave. Most of none of it. We'll get you. We'll get you. Charles is away? Yeah. Charles is away. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I can say earlier, so uh, <coughs> as I said earlier, I apologize. I didn't get a chance really to, to prepare as much as I wanted to. Who's giving the shoot tomorrow? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't live here. Probably Orange State. I'm a Kenyan rabbi. Shkaya that Charles still has a girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both have stems. Okay, so we're gonna do a Jewish dollar in a minute. Oh, shops. Very neat. Yeah, sure. I love your patch. I'm looking for the other one that says. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to get it. Maybe not. How much is it? I have more. Yeah. I'm looking for it. All right. Thank you. Well, Drew, Drew, you saw it's a little shorter. Oh, there's pickles. Uh huh. Wow. All right. I'm gonna go. Oh man! Okay, we're on now. <laughs> so now we're going to do Bruce Dollar. There is a interesting debate. Um, this is this is go, this this Bruce is more. Is Bruce you said Dollar? So Bruce Dollar is. Um, it goes into, uh, the Zerah is going to go into why there's a machloket as to uh, a part of the walls of the Beit HaMikdash. Quick question before we move on to that. Go for it. The, um, the Rishi Tebos of Nechoshes in the previous yeah. Jewish, is that the Zerah Shimshon's Chodesh or is, does he have a Makor? Yeah, I was wondering that. Okay, I didn't see it inside. Uh, can you see? Uh-huh. I think it was on that, yeah. Okay. According to this, it's his own idea. Yeah, it would have quoted something. Yeah, he, he would have quoted. He would have for sure. Yeah. He always put it around. Yeah. Oh, put it around. Oh, yeah, it's not he's big enough to come up with his own. Camera's on. Yes, thank you. Okay, good question. I think it's his own. Yeah, which which dress right there? Four. Yeah. Dalit. Dalit. Okay. So now and we're live on everything. We're live on everything. So we're. This is the second Torah of the night. Uh, the Gemara uh, Baba Batra Perikei or Daf Ein Hey says, "The Santi Kadkod Shim Sotayich." It says, "Can I ask a question?" Yeah, go for it. 
the Mama Aretz. I'm he hearing like, started, yeah. all this stuff with the Kotkod, <laughs> Shager, like in the army. What is this Kotkod, kotkod mean? Kotkod means, um, Shager means to release. Yeah, but Kotkod, what's that? Kotkod means is like the points. In other words, you're telling point one to point, point A to point B. Kotkod is like the um, central command. Yeah. He was like, that's the, that's like the Hamal. The person at the Hamal, you say Kotkod to whatever. Ah. In other words, the code, the code, code is the main person. He's the, he's the command person. All right. right. So now, that's, interestingly, Kad code here. But that's why you probably did. But code that's code, why I asked you. Right. Code code is spelled with the kof, kof, not a kaf. Isn't that yeah. connected to the bracha with Yosef Asadik? Uh, right. Code code right. 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 You're right. Correct. Um, so it says here. Baba Bakr Parak Hey says the Sati Kad Kol Shim Shotai Chad Amar the Shom Chad Amar the Yashve. This week's parsha, what do we know about the Avnei, the Avnei uh, Avanim of the um, the twelve diamonds, the twelve, the 12, 12, stones, 12 stones, the twelve tribes. Of the, right, right, right? And one of them is Shoam, and one of them is Yashve. Amar Kadosh Baruch Hu, right? Chad Amar the Shoam. One of them says, "Some tea cut code shim I will make your walls out of cut code. One person, one opinion says that cut code is means shim shotayich is wall. Walls shim shotayich are walls, right? Okay, one of them says, it's in Yishayam. It says, one says that the cut code means stones of Shoam, and one of them says it's the stones of Yashfeh. Amar Kadosh Baruch Hu. Lehebe Kedin Uchudin. Let us be like both. Means that we'll make the walls, will be made both of Yashfeh and Shoam. Al Tam Yishanel, that's the Gemara. Tarikh Iyun, Zerah Shimshon in typical fashion says, I need to understand, Lama Davka Yuha Chomot, we don't even know how they look. You know right. how they look? Right. <laughs> I don't you know ever know. saw one? He said, in fact, even in the English, in the article, usually they tell you like the name in English. It says here, Shom and Yashver. They don't tell you. They don't the know. stones or the walls of the breastplate? The stones themselves are Shom and Yashver. Okay. But the stone, what, what, what Yishayahu is telling you about when he says the Santikat code, Shim Shotai, he's talking about the walls of the Beit HaMikdash. Right, but they weren't. Made out of stone, but that's what the, that's what the, that's what he said. Wow. That's what I, I don't know. That actually word made out of that, but he says this. The zero shimshon says I don't know. Get it? I don't get it. So what does he say? Vishlomar. This is such a beautiful Torah. It's great. Shebeilu avanim hayakatuv v'hem abavnei hachoshen shmot Yosef uBinyamin. So if you look in the, the midrash, the midrash in Shmot Rabbah, it says that these two stones. That the names of Yosef and Benjamin were inscribed on the Choshen, on these two, the Shoam and the Yashfeh. Which one is what? What? Benjamin is Yashfeh. I believe so, yes. You're right. I believe so. Oh, yeah, we're going to get to why in a second. The Chatu B'Sefer Shilte Gibori. The Sefer Shilte Gibori, which is a, um, it's a, a Sefer written many, many years ago. He says here by uh, a work by Rabbi Avram Partoglione. Uh, basically, about the Beit HaMikdash and the different. Uh, um, uh, Kili, he says like this: Shashom yo'il lizchira v'la'inayim v'hu tov lehashir v'hu melamed v'shon ha'adam la'alitz u'daber v'chokma la'avin ha'chidot ha'neramot v'kimat yavi et ha'adam l'idei nevuah. Okay, so he says, "Is what happens? With, what's what? What's unique about the Shoham? This is not me saying this. this is not the Zera Shimshon. He's quoting the Shulte Agi Borim, and he says, "Stone has a skula. The skula has a skula of what to become wealthy." The lady in the old city, she has all these different stones. She has everyone right. is different skula. Really? So he says here, yeah, she makes jewelry. Yeah, right. So he says, yeah, what he says. So he says here, look. <laughs> so he says here, look. The Shoham says, "Is it's good for memory? It's good for your eyes. It's good to be wealthy. It also teaches a person to what." To to speak with the proper tongue, to speak nicely, and to speak with chokma. Who, oh, we who better get one of those yashves. Who is that? <laughs> Almost to bring us to the Who was all? Who had all of those? So he you said it was Binyamin, though. No, the Yosef. No, the Shoam is, is Yosef. Yashves, you said it's Binyamin. Okay, so he said, "It's not even though Yosef me plesh ayalo inayim tovot," as it says, "Ben Porata Yosef, Ben Porata Leayim." Right? Ayalo is chira, as it says, what? By Yisko Yosef. Basically, that the Eben of Shoam represents, corresponds to Yosef Atzarek, whose name was represent, was written on that stone specifically, because it has the it has 
he says here in this, the Shoham is beneficial for memory, wealth, allows a person to speak eloquently with a lot of uh, huh. Chma, and allows us to understand. Same Here's letters as Moshe, though. What? Shoham is the same letters as Moshe. And it's interesting that, and think yeah. about that. That's very good. Right? Okay, that's what the Shilte Gibberim says. Based on this, we can understand what? That why will, there be, why will the wall of Yerushalayim be made with Shoham? Lachen, ki dele remo, shamati lavo, umalaha etziat Hashem, vatzlacha rabaha, vuzchira tova, yachomot yimishoham. That's why it says what happens if we look at the Pesukim, the right after, what does it say? That in the future, the land will be filled with what? Deah, that knowledge, similar to the Shoham, which is what? Phil allows you to have Deah, right? Haslacha will have great success, and good memory. Why? Amen. So that's what happens. So he says, is that corresponding to the Shoham, that's why we have the Shoham. Now we have to explain what? The Yashveh. Okay, we said already the Yashveh is going to be what, Binyamin? So now he says, now the pitch, now we have to understand the person who says the Yashveh in Baba Batra, he said, Hainu, Masha Katavarav, and Iskarla. If you look at the Shilte Giburim again, Shayashves, Ulatom, Ishmar, Adam, Shalot, Noah, Samim, Amimitim. The benefit of the Yashve stone is that it protects a person from being given deadly poisons, and one who carries it will not drown. Vinitana, Binyamin, Iskarla, is Chutimo. He says, why is why, 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 Chuti Mo? So now that's already a very bold statement. He says, why is it going to protect the person from not drowning? What happened to Binyamin? What do we know about Binyamin? It doesn't say in Hebrew about this uh, drowning thing. What does it say here? It says, oh, it says, oh, he doesn't say that. Okay. It says about, because uh, well, if you read the rest of the... In English. Right, in English, because you, you, cause you, the, the Hebrew doesn't complete the sentence of what it says in the Shittah Yiborim. That's why. Um, but if you look, anyway, so he says, what happened... What happened? It says, <laughs> Binyamin will remember what happened to him when he was with his mother. What happened to Binyamin she with died, his mother? Died she died at childbirth. Exactly. It says here, she chai, for she gave birth to him when he was, she was still alive, obviously. <laughs> but what? Well, she went, she passed away as soon as she started giving birth. Right? So obviously she started being alive. She was alive when the birth started, and when she died, by the time it was over. Below Izika, below Imita Oto but what? She didn't die. She didn't cause any trouble to him. Right? So you say, what? Look. It says, What does it say? So that, therefore, we could see already that what? The stone that protects one from death is thus fitting for B'nit Why is it? Why is Just like the Yashva, which protects what? What, is, what does the Yashva do? It protects people from dying. Yeah. Similar to Binyamin. Beit HaMikdash. Right, well, exactly. It's Kapara. Right, look what he says. Beit HaMikdash. 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 Beit so it says, if the Beit HaMikdash... No, he wasn't born yet. Was, was. Why? Yosef was 17. No, was but, but Pinyamin was only a few years younger. Yeah, he, he wasn't, wasn't there. No. I don't think he, he was, was there. He I don't think he wasn't there. Right, because he's probably too young. Right, right, he was. Because afterwards, Yosef wants to see his brother and brother. Right. <laughs> right, so he says, if the Beit yeah, HaMikdash... Right, and now he says, what happens if we would have built the Beit HaMikdash in one of the other Chalkot, not in Binyamin? You would have said, what would have happened? You, you want Hashem to answer you? You better have Rachmanis. You didn't have Rachmanis on your own brother. You better have Rachmanis. You want to have Rachmanis? You want Hashem to have Rachmanis on you? And that's why Binyamin's stone was the Yashve. The Mashma Yesh Pe. He has a mouth. If you should be Binyamin, Dafka Yesh Lo Pe. He's Palel. Wow. As he says here, therefore, Moshe, therefore, Binyamin is, is the Yashve. We all know the Yashve, like, he's, like you said, Yashve is Binyamin. But we said Yashve is Yeshpe. He has a nice mouth. Because Binyamin is the only one. Well, you could daven. Only by him you could daven. Right, why? Because everyone else. Because he had Rahman, because he, he wasn't there. He wasn't there to have right? it. It would be chutzpidik to ask Hashem for Rahmanut in one of the other chalaki of other Shvatim. When they didn't have a chmolis, part of the base was in Yehuda. Ah, so that's been but right. But the main part of Mikdash, the main part of the Mikdash was in Binyamin. Oh, with the Kodesh Kodashim, the main thing is the. Right. So now, look, let's go to the last part here. So it now explains. Now, explain the two views. Now we have to explain why Hashem accepts both views. 
HaKadosh Baruch Hu Amar Lehevim Kedinu Fadim. What happens to Gemara? The Gemara says, Hashem says, let it be beat like both. Like one and like the other. Sharesh Nei. What, what, what does that mean, beat? Be. Look, in the Gemara, in the beginning of the, the, beginning of this Torah, it says here, the Baba Bachar, it says, Chad Amar the Shoam, Chad Amar the Yashvek. Ah, for right. the Beit HaMikdash right. in the future. Right. Right. Yeah. It's talking about the third base of Mikdash. I don't, I don't think they're talking about the base of Mikdash. I think they're just okay. talking about, like, no, no. It's just in Yushalayim. So just that's more Yushalayim. Uh, generally, like, the city walls, but ah, not that walls. Not okay. 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 okay, the wall, I'm sorry. You're right, the sort of walls. I, I, I'm not a Bakti Nishai, but I, I, I think that's the answer. Yeah, that makes more sense. Uh, let's see here. Let me just see here. The walls. It says the walls surrounding the base of Mikdash. It does say the wall surrounding the Beit HaMikdash. Okay. You're right. Okay, fine. Okay, so now we have to understand why does Hashem say I want it to be like both? Right? We can understand that there's a... We, look it, we understand. Right? We got the one, one is Yashfeh and one is Shoam. We understand that Shoam represents Yosef HaTzadik and, and Yashfeh represents Binyamin. Now we have to understand why Moshe... Uh, sorry, why Hashem says that we should be, be like both. Sharei Shneem B'nei Rachel. Right? Both of them were who? Children of Rachel. Rachel. Rachel, Rachel, Rachel is the one who, what do we know about? She, she, right? doesn't, she doesn't, she doesn't, there's doesn't, there's no Nechama, there's no Nechama for her. She never, she doesn't want to get, she doesn't want to get consoled, right? Why? Manala Rachel, why? Because she's, the, the children are still in? Kenenu. Right, what does she say here? Vakatu Romer. Oniyasa Rala Nechama. Rachel Mavakal Manea, Bemayat Nechem, Kienenu. Right. And then it says, the verse is addressed to Rezachel, the one that cannot be consoled. She can't be consoled. It is not that, therefore it says, V'satik had kol, kigen eget shnei banayich. It's corresponding to your two sons. In other words, Hashem is consoling Rachel, saying that when we will gather B'nai Yisrael to rebuild Yerushalayim, he, he will build its walls both like Binyamin and like Yosef to represent your two sons. To represent your two sons, the two types of stones. Because you don't give up to Daven for us. No, she, man, no, she doesn't give up. Now we have another question, right? What's the word? You, you, someone here asked a question. Why are we calling the wall Shem Right? Someone just asked. Sounds like sun. Right? Exactly. Sounds like Shemesh. Like Shemesh, right? Exactly. So he says, look. He says here, Mipnei shekeshmo shea Shemesh ha'kol emechim ala oro. Kach yelchu goyim la'or selchomotach sheyu kmo Shemesh. Right? So he says his... Oh, I guess it's very far from now. So what did you say here? Hold up to wait another 2,000 years. He says here, what did you say? Just as everyone walks in the light of the sun, so too, when Hashem tells Rachel that when you will, that you, the nations, the Amin, will walk in the light of your walls that are bright as the sun. In the time of, in the time of Mashiach, you will, Hashem will make a sukkah for those who are the tzadikim. Osim los zacha. If you merit to see and you and you become one of the tzaddikim, what happens? Osim lo sukkah, you'll make an actual sukkah. Sukkah, lo zacha, osim lo tzaltel. What's that? A, a, like a like an awning, like a like a pergola, like a like a plate, like a. You get to be says your tzaltel. He says you'll make a roof without walls. A you get to see the same, but you won't get to see. You won't get to be enjoy the sun, right? What happens when I'm in the shade? It's a little cooler. But what happens when I'm in the sun? I enjoy it. Like I'm a mash. Why? When the sukkah, you, you the don't sukkah, see none of the sun? No, you're protected. Right? The sukkah is protected. Oh, well, the, the sukkah is a schach on top of you, covering you. What, the tzilzal, what's the difference between what is What is the tzilzal? Tzilzal, he says here, is... It's a, like not a kosher sukkah. Right, it's a mere shade. That is a roof without walls. It's not as nice as the Libya. Right, right. We're going to get this kid. He's going to get this kid. It's one it. step below. Like, lo zacha, lo zacha. It's going to be this If you're not even married to that, you'll have some sort of kamer. Right, lo zacha. What's anak? Ashar, Porsim, what, what? What's Anak? Oh, sorry, those are Chavosim no Anak. He's not in the word that he'll make a necklace. Just a necklace. They give him a necklace. A necklace, but now if you don't have that, you'll we'll just come in. In other words, it's smaller, smaller pieces of, like the, the schut. In other words, what you're going to be, you're not going to really enjoy Ashar, and for the remainder of, the ta, the, of its hide, Porsim, Al-Chumot Yerushalayim, he will spread out the walls of Yerushalayim, Vizivo, Holech, Misof, Olam, Ratzofo. And splendid will shine from the end of the world to the other. Shemar Bachu Gurim Lo. Just as you have to go do uh, Eun on this. Uh... Yeah, so he says here, thus the verse refers to the walls of the suns to allude that the, sh- the shining hide of the Beit that will spread upon them. Meaning that if you merit, right? Oh, sorry, I skipped, oh, I skipped the part of the word. That's why it didn't make sense. So he says here, Kedami Mahatam. So, Atidah Kedash Baruch Lo Asot, Sukala Tzadiki, Me Orosh Lo Beit Right, so he says here, when you make, in the future, Hashem will make a Sukkah for the Tzadikim, 
from the the hide, that is from the the, the skin of the Livyatan, if you really are Zocher, you'll see the Sukkah. But what is this Livyatan? What are you excited about sitting in the skin of a Livyatan? No, but you're sitting in that. It's not this, but what? What, what, what are you excited? What do you care about the skin of a Livyatan? I don't understand this, this Midrash. What, a Jew is excited to sit in the skin of a Leviathan? This no, big... He's, no, but he's going to sit in the... He's going to sit in the... He said that. What's this thing? Though? What's this thing, the Leviathan? Mm-hmm. The whole world's waiting to sit in the skin of a Leviathan? That's the time of a Jew to wait thousands of years of gullahs to sit in the skin of a, of a whale? What is it? Say that every second. Okay. What is that, though? But what is it? What does it mean? I think he's saying... What he says here... The way he summarizes it... Hashem says, a very good Hashem says, I accept both views, both, your, 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 both, both Yosef and Binyamin. He, he says, is, when he says, um, when we rebuild Jerusalem, he'll build the walls out of two types of stones that represent the two sons. And when he will build the walls, which are made out of Shim Totaich, he, which can also mean your son, meaning your son, as it loses the fact that he will spread out the shining high and the sun over, over the wall. Meaning that the sun is kind of like the, the, the Orosh of the Yatan will in some way protect, um, protect over the walls. I mean, sorry, the, 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 the Orosh of the Yatan will protect over the walls so that they will, the, shine, the sun will shine on those people who merit and those who it will not uh, shine on those people who are. Well, you guys are fishermen. Tell us, what is this uh, thing? <laughs> I'll let you know when I catch We're you. waiting thousands of years to sit in the sukkah of a, a whale. Good question. You guys are fishermen. Tell us. Maybe you know something. Oh, no. You know what it is? The, the Rosh Leviathan is protected. Right? What happens with the sun? When the sun is so bright, you're not going to be able to sit out there for so long. So the Rosh Leviathan is the sukkah. You're, if you marry it, you're going to sit into something that's beautiful. The sukkah of Leviathan is something protected. The sukkah is protected. Doesn't he also say he's going to play with the Leviathan, like whatever that means? Right? Play with the Right. So I guess... Like, and then he's going to eat them. Yeah, yeah, and we're going to feast the Leviathan. We're going to eat them, right? So we're first going to play, then we're going to eat them. That's Drush Dalad. Whatever that means. Okay. Shkoach, hold on one second. Stop. And then maybe we'll get a third one. Shkoach. Shkoach. Uh, we need to get hold of some chairs not, for the kollel that's coming. Right? Katsos. Does anyone know where they're usually kept? Because Charles messaged me something about a neighbor or something. Why is there random vegetables here? <laughs> we get a visitor from the farms. He works the farms here. Yeah. And he's bringing us organic. He works at a farm. Our friend Larry. October 7th or Oh, you said you did it? Good. Thank you. It doesn't have a very strong sound. This is awesome. Which farm? I don't have a very sensitive sound. A lot of people became farmers after October 7th. I don't smell anything. He's okay. He's like, no. It's good when you have dinner at home. You come, you shoot a dance. Garlic. You've always been there. Who's got this? What's that garlic? It's it's it's, it's good that, that Charles asked me yesterday. Can I cover it for him today? No, I normally tell you the same thing. No, you, usually talking on Sundays. Like I'm not going to be here already. So like prepare. Yeah. Yesterday he says I'm not ready. I'm so ready. You get so good. I I I learn this airship every day. Anyway, anyway. So I listen anyway. Before you met Charles. Yeah, yeah before you met Charles. I learned anyway. So I learned before. Sure, it's not green onion. No, it's just through uh, through the through learning through knowing. You can understand why I'm confused, right? Because it looks like green onion. Okay. Oh, this one is a little challenging. Oh, you've been into the Zerah for years? It's a very underdeveloped area. Do you have a story of Yeshua? Everyone has a story of Yeshua. Yeah, Rabbi Yeshua. 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 No, no. Purim Kotzer. The Purim Kotzer. I can't talk now. Whoa. Yeah, Purim Kotzer. Did you know what he just said? He just said the Chayal that Orosh Libyatan is Gimatria Ogdat Aza. Well, I want to say a good news, Yeshua, for my son who came to Zer Shimshon this Shabbat. He came back his first time, 48 hours wow. since being in Kanyunis, and the second time the whole Mechoma. And literally, by so he was back in Aza, and he heard good news from Shab- through the army and um, Shabbat that he'd had contact with in Kanyunis, that the 
terrorists he'd arrested, his unit arrested, many of them were from October the 7th. Yeah, yeah. So wow. that's very fulfilling well, for, well, for well. a unit. Mm. Unit Tisha Bishmoni, you can check Did it out. Did he get the deal with the alarm? Excuse me? Anybody who served the... The system crashed. What oh, happened? What, what is it? Allah was giving us for people are serving or served since October before October seven. Free ticket to two tickets to Europe. Yeah. So it's yeah. over. It's my brother, my brother, my brother. Yes. Yeah. 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 What kind of fish is it? Did you serve the army? Where is it? 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 But to he have a proper it's shower, it's it took an hour to get rid of all the shoes. He says it's an hour and a half. No, no, no. When we can start? I'm trying to see if I can do this to Which one? There's only one of the short one, which is bad. It's a little challenging. Okay, we're all going to help on bad. Torah bad. Torah bad. Two. Number two, guys. Everyone needs to help out. It's not as easy. It's like a little bit more of like a Gemara cup, no? So hopefully they'll be able to go through it. Can we turn on the thing now? We're live. Go. Okay. All right, we're going to try to do one more. Um, Torah Bet. The Torah, second Torah. Torah Bet. Yeah, this one's a little bit more challenging, and I'm just saying that in advance. I tried to do it myself before. It's not so easy. So if anyone wants to help out. Okay. It says here, Vata. Tetzavet Meishah Vichur Lachachem Zach. Zach. Bet. Bet. And Rashi says, Katit Hazetim Haya Kotesh be Machteshit ve no Tochanan Berecha. In a Machteshit is like, what do they call it? They call it a It's like a stone, a big stone goes over the oil. No, but you don't do it with a big thing. So what's a machtesh? Machtesh is the you know the you know the the little, the, the little thing. You, little hand one. Yeah, the little hand one. Yeah, a mortar and pestle they call it. Right, but not ground at the mill, right? So that there's no sediment in the oil. The first drops, right? Those are the first ones, right? Asheni is pasul amnora. Kasher imnachot. Shnemar katit la maor velo katit la nachot. That's what Rashi says. Okay. Rashi says that basically the first drops, right? There will be so that so that basically Rashi says that in katit means that it's the first drops. It should be pure. The first drops that come out of that when you're crushing it with the mortar and pestle, that you know this, it's like a stick with the bowl inside. You kind of mix it together, right? That is the katit. God, there's a lot of work to get that, that done. That's out. katit, but the second ones, the next group after that, that is a shem hashini, the second oil. Pasula menorah, it's pasul for the menorah, but it's kasher for the menachot. Kasher for any of the menachot offerings. Okay, that's what Rashi says. Now the now the Zeresh Shimshon tries to understand is now we have to look and now he says will come on gabei menachot. Now if you look at the menachot, now okay, Rashi just said what? Rashi just said that the first oil is kosher for the menorah, but not kosher for the menachot. So what's the Zeresh Shimshon going to do? Let's look at the menachot and understand and try to start comparing. Now, if you look at Gabbai Menachot, Pirash Rashi, Al, Pasuk Vi Saron, Solat Balu Right? If you look in Pirash Rashi, Pasuk Vi Saron, Solat Balu Right? If you look in Pirash Rashi, Solat Balu Right? Pasuk Vi Saron, Solat Balu Right? Right? If you look in Pasuk Perek Haftet, Pasuk Mem, it says, Lo Neemar Katit Lechova. Rashi says, Lo Neemar Katit Lechova. El Lachshir, Lo Fish Neemar Katit Lemaor. For since it says, By the Menorah Katit Lemaor, Yechol of Solom Nechot, Tomu Lomar, Kan Katit, well, why would we think that the good oil would be puzzle? That's exactly what he's asking. He's asking, he's saying, sorry, katit. So he says, like, oh, he's saying there, but it's not coming to you, you have to do katit. Right. 
But you should know that don't think it's not kosher if you use the best oil. Why would you think it's not kosher? Because, because in... Maybe it only has to be only for the menorah. Right, exactly. Maybe that's what we would think. Right? Because what, what, what does Eresh just do? He takes the Rashi from one place, takes the Rashi from the other place, and says, what does Rashi say in both places? And understand, the, what do we understand from the two different places? So the first place we said, in this week's parsha, we said what? That Katit, only the first oil is kosher for the menorah, and the second oil is kosher for the menachot, but not kosher for the menorah. In the second place, that is in Menachot, it says what? That Yikatit is not fitted as a, a chiyuv, right? but rather you can use it. I mean, it's, it's not a chiyuv like it is in the Menorah, but you can use it if you want to, right? It doesn't say Katit la Menachot. Right, it doesn't say, but it says Katit la Ma'or, not Katit la Menachot. Exactly, right. So that's exactly right. Tamu la Mar, Kan Katit, la Metechtiv, Nami Kasher, it's also kosher, it means that the first Katit, means which is the first, the first um, grinding is kosher for menachot, but it's not necessarily, it's not a chiyuv, like it is with the menorah. Okay? Now it says, look, it says here, Makshim. Who are these people that ask? He says that the, he says Makshim, when he says Makshim, uh, Art Scroll says that it's the Mizrahi, that is the uh, Pirush the Mizrahi. He says, the lo ketiv likra lo he velova. Let the verse write the word, what are you saying here? Where the Gemara expands based on the Shem Rivav, that the Malacha, which should be forbidden to Cholom, okay? Let the verse write either hey, but that is why did the Torah not omit both letters? Okay, so he says here, since the word katit regarding the katit was okay. Okay, that is. The lo katit katit bam nachot, the lo katit lama or bam nora, right? Since the word, basically the verse where that read, write neither the hey nor the vav, he's basically saying is one or the other. We miss, but that is the Torah did not omit both letters, and we should arrive at the same conclusion. Meaning what happens? If you look at the ma'or by the menorah, let's say we didn't say the word ma'or, right? Right? Like katik ma'or is what it says in the, this week's parsha, right? Let's say we didn't write that word in menorah, right? Since we know, just say shemen katik. Shemen katik. We would have known ma'or. Shemen katik. We would have known ma'or. Why? Because we're talking about the menorah. What else are we talking about, right? So he says, right, since the word katik regarding the mincha teaches us only to ignore them, right? Why the Torah not omit both of these terms, katik by the menorah and uh, oh, sorry. Why does it say? Why does it say? Why does the Torah say katit in the menachot and maor in the menorah? We, we didn't have to say those. We would have been obvious, right? What is it? How did Rashi know that derived from the katit la maor that the second oil is fit for menachot? Maybe we should say what that also. We do not require the mincha offering to be katit, but it's also true that the second oil by itself is also unfit. So that the first oil is mixed with the second one. So he says, how do Rashi derive from the word katit lamor that the second oil by itself is, un, is fit for the use of the mincha offering? Okay, so now he's basically saying is. That this is the that Zerah Shemeshon's question are twofold. One is why does it say kati, Why does it have to say maor when it's talking about the menorah? It's obvious. And why does it have to say katit when we're talking about the menachot? We don't need them. Those two words don't make don't, are not necessary because what we were, it would have been obvious. We would have gotten the same conclusion had those words not been mentioned. And he says is another question is why? How did Rashi know that when it says katit la maor? That it said that second oil is katit. And when it says katit lamor, how do we know that katit is kasher for the minachot? I mean, the second katit lamor means that the first drops are only kasher for the maor. But the, what does that mean? That for the second, the second drops are katit what are kasher for the minachot. How do you get to that? How did Rashi get to that? That's what he's asking. Good question, right? All right, that's perfect. Okay, so now he says like this. So first, according to the, uh, he says here, Rish Lamar. So he says, let's look at the second answer first. So he says, it's like this. We can start explaining like this. The fee said that if so, there will be two contradictory elements of logic here. Basically, he says that we have to use our brain in a different way than we usually do. He says, look, for once the, you know, the Torah says, by the menorah, it says, katit lama or, ilo ha katit katit lama nachot, it would, if katit would not have been written regarding the menachot, haiti yachol lama sha katit ya pasul lama nachot. Kumosha katav rasha pasul visa rod solet. 
לפי סבר הזאת צריך לומר שהחשוב דהיינו שמן הראשון פסול, ומילא דשם נכון צריך הגרוע דהיינו שמן השני, right, so he says it like this, he says that we have to think logic, uh, illogically to understand. He's saying that if Katit had not been written regarding the Mincha, we would have thought, what, what would we have thought? That Katit is unfit for the Menachot. As Rashi says, Rashi says that uh, on, the, on, the, on the Pasuk, Isaron Solet, he says, there he says, for your Azot, Tzarich Lomar, and we have to say is that a Hashub, that the superior type of oil is the first oil, but it's, pas, it's Pasul for what? It's pasul for the mincha. Basically, saying is that what we need the worst, the inferior type of oil. That is the second oil. There's no longer a reason. What is he saying here? In other words, although the word kati teaches us that the first oil, first oil, is fit for use in the mincha for the minachot, we need the. Well, it's very hard. It's very hard. It's a very hard one. The need for this teaching clearly indicates that the first oil is not perfect for the second. Right. Hence, it's illogical to infer from the words katit lamor that the second is also fit for the nachot, only if it makes it the first. Basically saying is, basically saying is that it's lafu chalafu. Basically saying the reason that the first oil is not preferable to the second oil with regard to minchot is that the reason that the second oil must be mixed with the first is uh, thus two contradictory elements of logic. Basically saying is that the first we would have thought that katit is only good for the maol, and we would have thought that what katit is not good for. But he says is he says we would have thought that not only that's a pasul. And therefore he says what? Therefore we have to say that the opposite is true. The first oil is pasul for the mincha, and therefore we would think that we need the garua for the minachot. He says, therefore, no, that's not the truth. That's not what we would have thought that. But he says, no, that's not what we would have thought. That's the word. Now he well, says. It's hard, to th- it's hard to think that you would think the garua you need for something, for right? the bit of mikdash. You would, you would have thought that. That's right. That's why he says. You wouldn't. Well, why would you think that you need the. Right? Ba- exactly. That's what he's saying. Is that. You think that you think that second one. And you think that the second one must be mixed with the first oil. And therefore, we have to say that it's kilo afu. That's why he says it's afu. You would, you would have thought that. The, it's, that's what he says. He starts with. Hayut b'chan shtei svarot apuchot. The achasha katav katit la maor. Right, since it says in the Katit Lama or by the menorah, you would have thought, we would not have thought that what? That regard, but why would you think it's Pasul the Menachot? That's the only. That's what Rashi says. Why would you think that? It says, Yashem and Ashni Pasul the Menachot. Right? Why would you have thought that it's Pasul? Because if, if we know that the first is good for the menorah, what does by default mean? That it's only good for the menorah. Right, meaning katit lama or, or means and only lama or. Only no, but, lama or. But why would you think it's puzzled by the menachot if you took it to the menachot? Because it's because it says katit lama or. So but it's a good only thing. Only for the but, menorah. No, but okay. No, but, so I do, you, meaning there's two, ah, there's two different things here. Only there's use it for the menorah. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what you could only use it for the menorah. Only use it for the menorah. So why over there by menachos does it say katit? It's not not to, not to machay of you. You have to use katit for menachos because we already saw over by where we were talking about menorah that menorah is for katit. And Shani, you can use for Menachos. So it's not saying you have to use Katit, because we know we can use Shani. It's saying it's okay to use Katit. Why would I have thought it's not okay? Because it's Katit Lama Or and not Lama Ah, nice. All right, that's what he's saying. That's the first option. It ain't too much for our head. Let's say we use it for logic. Shashini Pasula Menachot, that the second oil is unfit, like you said. Why, why would we think that second is good for the Menachot? Why should we think that the second is good? Right? You just said it, right? We free say that like other reasons, Shashini Pasula Menachot, that the second oil is unfit for Menachot. Since what? Since the first oil, the shemen katit la maor, is not included, the shemen katit, the good stuff, is not continued, is not included in the second in the in the second one, right? It would emerge that the inferior second oil is not required for mincha offerings. And the first oil would certainly be acceptable. Accordingly. There should be no reason to say katit in Menachot. That's my logic. That's yeah, exactly. Automatically, it's a bikosher. Exactly. That's exactly right. The lake of the memory during the davka katit, and we cannot say that we need specific katit for the Menachot offering. Shara ben Menorah katit la maor, because it was written regarding the Menorah, it says maor. With the mashma, the lobe. That's what you said. Exactly what he said. Exactly. Ela vadai tarich lomar, shakatu balach shir ha katit. The pasuk comes to teach us that katit is for, is ra'ul. Is for is fit, is fit for both menachot. La puke as far as shayalanu shakatit yaya pasu. Sheish sheish for zavalo olam akochach lomar shashini kasher la menachot. Mimela imaate as far as la cheret. Thus we have this continued the second reasoning. Lomar shagor pasu la nimashini. Basically saying is like this. He's basically saying is that 
By saying that katit la ma'or, we would have come to the conclusion that what? That katit is only necessary for ma'or and not necessary for ma'chot, or not ra'ui for ma'chot. But because it says katit and ma'chot, we can realize, we can learn that it's okay to use katit for ma'chot, but not necessarily, it's not chiyuv. He's basically making a very, it's a very fine diyuf. He's not making something that's not like one of these nice kiddushim, like we learned in the previous two Torahs of the day. This is more of like a diyuf, like a gemara cup kind of thing. And that's what he says. Now he says, Let's say it said katit, at written in the menachot, and not ma'or. So you're basically saying is, let's say, we, what, what would have happened had it said katit in Menachot and not in the menorah? Right? Because we have to basically, in order to understand the diuk, what we have to do, we say is, if we take out a katit in the ma'or, and we only have katit in Menachot, what would we have said? That it's okay, we have to do it in Menachot, but not in, that it would have been okay to have the second level katit in the menorah. Right? Right, so he says here the first. Therefore, I have to say the more the, the first oil required for the for the menorah and mincha and and not for the mincha, since they, they may have led to want to infer that the first oil is unfit for the mincha. Or therefore, the mincha, the verse about mincha, I have to say katit. It's just that indeed fit for use. Basically, he's saying is the reason why it says katit in both places. In the case in the case of the menorah, katit is to teach us that only katit is relevant for menorah. Only katit means you can't use anything else. Only the first, the first, the first push, the first drops, and in the town, and why does it say katit in the menachot to teach us that there, unlike with the menorah where it says katit and it says you have to use the first oils, there the katit is saying is you can use the katit, but you don't have to use the katit. That's what he's saying. Uh, wow, where are all the brothers, guys? Amen. Beautiful Shabbos, Hanukkah, Sameach. Hanukkah, Purim, 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 Two, four, nine. Nine, six, eight, nine. Nine. You, need, you need two, then eight bread, and one eight mezoinus. You could do zimun. Yeah, I but to say shamus. I mean, no, you don't have to say shamus. No, but if we have ten, but four of us haven't washed, we can still say shamus. Almost ten. You don't need that. Uh, Next time.